seconds and we move on to the, to the next uh, speaker today, which is Professor Stefan Roche. Professor uh, Roche is an ICREA research uh, professor at the Catalan Institute of uh, Nanoscience and Nanotechnology. Um, he studied theoretical physics at ENS and got the PhD in uh, 1996 at Grenoble University in France. He has worked in France, uh, Japan, Germany, and since uh, 2009, he has been working in Spain where he joined the ICREA, <coughs> ICREA institution. Professor Stefan Roche is a theoretician with more than 25 years of experience in the study of transport theory of uh, in low dimensional systems, including graphene, carbon nanotubes, semiconducting uh, nanowires and topological insulators. In, uh, since 2011, uh, he has been very actively involved in the European graphene European Graphene uh, uh, flagship project, first as a leader of the Spintronics uh, work package, and uh, lately as a division leader of the Graphene uh, flagship. Um, he's uh, the, the leader of the theoretical and computational uh, nanoscience group, which focuses on physics of uh, graphene and topological insulators as well as uh, 2D van der Waals uh, heterox structures. Um, his talk today is gonna, uh, the topic is gonna be graphene and 2D spintronics. So please, uh, Stefan, uh, when you are ready, we are looking forward to listening to your talk. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Maria Angeles, for, for the presentation. Also, thank you for a kind invitation to this uh, school on Spintronic, organized by the uh, Spanish network on Spintronic. I'm very, very pleased to, to be here today to give this presentation. I hope you will, you will enjoy. Um, so <clears throat> what I, I like to do in this presentation, if my slide uh, like to move. Next. OK, so first of all, I would like to um, uh, motivate, a bit, give the, the, the main motivation and uh, about why are we interested in uh, graphene and other two-dimensional materials for developing um, a spitronic application. So uh, it would be a bit of, of, of uh, history and also motivation. Uh, then I will have a second part, which, is, uh, which will be related to uh, I'm, called the, I'm calling these fundamentals of spin uh, transport physics in uh, hybrid Dirac matters because they are very generic um, phenomena that uh, have been discovered and they are key to understand what's going on in, this, uh, in these materials. And finally, uh, I will, uh, I hope I have time also to cover uh, this uh, third part, uh, which will be focused on more advanced concept of, of spin transport. Um, in two-dimensional material-based heterostructure, structure, um, including the discussion about uh, uh, giant uh, spin transport and isotropy uh, driven by proximity effects, or the generation of pure spin currents, and, and also topological phases. So, okay, let me go quickly. I'm, I'm uh, as Maria Angela said, uh, I'm, I'm working at the Institute, uh, Catalan Institute of Nanoscience and Nanotechnology in Barcelona. Uh, my group uh, is uh, focused on, on theoretical uh, transport uh, activities, um, and we are, uh, yeah, mainly working on, on spin physics. Um, so uh, let me let me first uh, explain uh, a bit uh, the history and the motivation of, of uh, working on, on graphene or two-dimensional spintronic. Uh, Fourteen years ago. Uh, this was the first report in the literature uh, about uh, the very interesting property of graphene as a, as a medium to transport uh, spin information over very long distance uh, at room temperature. So this is a work by the group of Barbon Vase, and typically in this type of spin transport measurement, um, they use so-called non-local uh, geometry 
in which you inject a, a charge current uh, in between two contacts. These ones are, are um, ferromagnetic. And then what happens here is there is a, a spin accumulation that we twist away. And that would be uh, eventually detect um, by two other uh, contact, voltage contact, far away from the charge current flow. And uh, the, by using uh, even a, a magnetic field, you can, you can process the spin current and get the typical evolution of this non local resistance as a function of magnetic field, from which you can extract the main uh, spin transport characteristic. So uh, in 2007, uh, this publication already shown that um, spin diffusion lengths in pure graphene deposited on the silicon oxide could reach uh, several micron uh, at room temperature. A few years later, uh, the group of uh, Albert Fert uh, reported, uh, let's say, the first measurement on epitaxial graphene, which is very large scale. And in their uh, spin transport measurement, these were two terminal, uh, they estimated um, even uh, longer uh, spin diffusion lengths of 200 micron. So that really uh, sparked the interest of using graphene as a, as a way to convey to transport spin information. Um, in 2013, this uh, very large uh, graphene flagship uh, project was uh, selected by the commission and launched for uh, at least 10 years. We, are, uh, we will enter 10 years, uh, two years from now. Uh, with a large budget and with the ambition to really uh, accelerate the innovation pro process from uh, discoveries to impact on society, and especially in innovation and especially in boosting the um, uh, technology capability of Europe uh, to become a leader in, in, in some field. And in this case, uh, we are interested in the, in the, in the field of spintronics. So we were very um, privileged that Albert Fert uh, was uh, very active and very enthusiastic. Um, and actually, as a member of the scientific uh, advisory board, he uh, suggested uh, that a specific, a dedicated uh, work package um, um, was uh, focused on spintronic to uh, investigate how far could we bring two-dimensional material for uh, spintronic application. Well, I, I, I don't think I need to, to remind uh, who is Albert and together with uh, Peter Kuhnberg, they have uh, not only predict but discover this giant magnetoresistance resistance and, uh, and this uh, first um, phenomena of uh, uh, spin-driven modification of uh, transport uh, signals uh, has had an enormous impact in markets, as uh, everybody knows. So um, the European task force uh, working on two-dimensional spintronic uh, today is um, constituted not only by academic partners, of course, the, the group of Albert or Bar Van Wees or Manchester, uh, and some others, but is also uh, more and more constituted by SMEs, companies which are uh, growth, um, growth uh, of materials, or companies in, in the field of uh, memory technologies, together with a, a research organization uh, which uh, offer the possibility to investigate how these two dimensional materials respond in a fab environment, which is the essential step before we move to real application. In 2015, we published uh, uh, the roadmap of the European flagship concerning Spintronic. So this is a document that you, you can refer. And uh, uh, in one of, this, uh, one of the page of this, of this uh, publication, we uh, put on paper what was our expectation. So it was a, uh, about all what would be the main research direction and the main challenge to overcome. And let's say that um, we are now like uh, six years uh, after this, uh, this uh, roadmap was published and uh, we have been following uh, the track and that we envisioned at start uh, with a very great surprise. I mean, we had a, a kind of collective vision, but uh, it turns out that uh, 
all the expectations have, have been fulfilled in terms of uh, fundamental science and technology building blocks. And now we're moving forward to increase the activity in uh, technology readiness level. So this is, uh, in a nutshell, this is uh, how this uh, European task force has been working and is still working now um, on bringing, first of all, demonstrating uh, some essential uh, device building block of Spintronic, not only uh, using two-dimensional material for designing more efficient uh, TMR vertical junction, but also to uh, use the benefit of uh, graphene and other two-dimensional to generate uh, passive and active device. One of the core, uh, let's say, more technology aspect is to co-integrate two-dimensional material with magnetic materials in the conventional uh, frame of, uh, let's say, advanced uh, MRAM technologies. And, uh, and, and then this is a necessary step uh, to uh, bring, um, to explore to which extent this two-dimensional material could bring a, a value, could improve the performances of existing generation of a spin transfer torque, MRAM, or this emerging uh, spin orbit torque, MRAM, uh, which have been investigated and uh, pioneered, so to speak, in Europe in terms of uh, basic concepts and also in terms of large-scale integration recently at INEC. So why, what makes graphing so attractive initially? Why? Uh, some people started to use graphene to, and to measure the spin uh, lifetime. Okay, graphene is a, is a material we, which has shown uh, very, very large mobility. And in addition, uh, carbon sp2 configuration, uh, we expected that uh, the spin orbit coupling would be very small. And as a result, uh, the source of uh, spin relaxation uh, would be also weak. So, this combination of very long mean free pass and very low spin orbit coupling were actually essential to anticipate that spin uh, diffusion lengths would be unprecedented long. Um, the state of the art uh, today is that the spin lifetime or uh, as a function of the gate here, you see this is a CVD graphene. Um, I don't, this is an exfoliate graphene at room temperature. We see the spin lifetime or the spin diffusion length. So this is roughly the upper limit of what has been measured to date. And as we show later, uh, the, the main question was to understand why we reach some this type of uh, time or length scale. What is, what is also essential is to study uh, spin transport in, uh, in a scalable two-dimensional material because this is really essential step to, to application. Uh, exfoliation is, is, not, is not an issue, is not a, a solution. It is used first to make a proof of principle, but, um, but then uh, you really have to deal with the complexity and the inner type of disorder of this uh, large scale uh, two dimensional materials such as the CVD grown uh, graphene or epitaxially grown graphene. So in the, in the graphene flagship, this is a common uh, issue for all the activities related to, let's say, more high-tech application of two-dimensional material. Uh, less than one year ago, it was like probably six months ago even, um, the European Commission, together with the graphene flagship consortium, launched the first pilot line, experimental pilot line. So this is really an important first investment uh, in order to go for much larger, much control production of uh, uh, electronic devices on the wave, at the wafer scale and, uh, and to provide Europe a kind of manufacturing infrastructure. So this is, is very important and it is uh, already employed for uh, developing uh, large scale photonic devices or electronic devices. Uh, but uh, the uh, progress achieved during the past uh, five to six years already shown that we, we can deal with this very large scale graphene. We can keep uh, its very good property, transport, charge transport property and spin diffusion property. And we can start to make very much more complex uh, architectures and, 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 and design different type of contacts and transfer spin information uh, on that 
type of platform. So that's already uh, uh, clear that uh, it's not really a problem for moving these two-dimensional material towards uh, the fab environment. Now the question is to which extent uh, their performances are really interesting for uh, companies and industries. As you certainly know, uh, uh, TMR is uh, and, and GMR and TMR uh, is, a, is, a, is a beautiful phenomenon, but it's a, it's a kind of very short scale uh, transport of uh, spin information and using uh, the change of the magnetic magnetization just to to measure uh, a resistance signal. But what is very important for pushing uh, spin related technology forward is the design of active spin device, which means that you want not only to inject spin information and to propagate it for a very long uh, length and room temperature, you also want to be able to manipulate. Okay, so uh, the Datada spin transistor is a kind of paradigm of this uh, uh, spin manipulation uh, uh, strategy, uh, but, uh, but they have been more useful and more uh, easy to implement phenomena, such as the spinal effect, uh, which has been predicted and then uh, discovered, uh, I think it was like 2000 something. Um, where strong spin orbit coupling materials offer uh, the possibility to generate pure spin current when you drive uh, a, a charge current. So you have uh, this separation due to the inner, uh, let's say, effective magnetic field of electro spin orbit coupling. Um, and so you can, you can create spin accumulation in absence of magnetic field. And this is a very interesting phenomenon that you will see can be implemented by proximity effect. Another extremely interesting phenomena is to use uh, the transfer of spin momentum in order to activate and eventually to reverse the magnetization of a, of a magnetic material. And, and this is uh, one of the most exciting uh, uh, aspects of spin 20 today is to uh, improve the charge to spin uh, conversion and, um, and to have this manipulation of the magnetization at a very low energy cost. So I was saying that uh, graphene first was very attractive because it could transmit spin information uh, for a very long uh, time, a very long scale. But the main interest of graphene, and especially in uh, the context of uh, active spin device, is the fact that you can tailor the uh, spin property of this two-dimensional two material in a completely unprecedented way. There is no equivalent. There will be never an equivalent with any other materials, bulk materials. So, and you can do this at the ultra compact, confined level, because as you know, this uh, two dimensional uh, material uh, allow to, to be uh, restacked one on top of the other. You can grow also by this uh, large scale te technique, different materials one after another. And as a result, you have interfaces that can be extremely clean uh, and you can imprint, for instance, in graphene uh, exchange coupling, spin orbit coupling, and you can imprint it at a different uh, location in space. So you can start to really uh, design extremely complicated architecture uh, in order to uh, manipulate your spin information. Uh, in the, yeah, I showed this this paper in 2013. Um, we, together with um, Maya Bekchev from CA, uh, we made the first calculation of, of uh, or by DFT or graphene deposit on the magnetic insulator could actually be magnetized uh, in the sense that if you look at, if you see this um, bond structure of the Dirac cone of graphene, um, then uh, the uh, exchange coupling due to the magnetic insulator, in this case was the YIG or European oxide, uh, open a gap and also uh, spin split the bounds and the uh, uh, computed uh, exchange uh, splitting uh, is an enormous uh, amount. Um, so that was a prediction. Uh, this is uh, my colleague, uh, friend, uh, Luis Hueso and Feliz Casanova, uh, where I think the first to demonstrate that proximity effect could be useful to uh, fabricate an active spin device. Uh, here they report uh, a kind of switch on and off uh, by an electric field 
a spin signal that they detect uh, in this uh, non-local geometry. And thanks to the fact that there is an interaction between a, a transition metal decalcogenide and a graphene channel. So uh, this was a beautiful uh, uh, demonstration. And today, because uh, the, the family of two-dimensional material is, uh, is, is gigantic, one of the main challenges is to really study this uh, interaction between a uh, very different type of two-dimensional material and try to see uh, how we can design um, the best interfaces for a given uh, spin functionality. 2017, 2018, two-dimensional uh, magnetic materials were um, discovered and uh, they, they were packed into some elementary device and already uh, enormous uh, spin functionality, 20,000 uh, uh, TMR were reported uh, in some of those materials. So they, they really um, enter as a, an enormous, an, very interesting new materials to be combined with graphene and other two dimensional materials in order to really start to make extremely compact uh, spin devices. This is one of the very last uh, uh, results published by our consortium, the graphene flagship by the group of Bar Van Weiss, where he used an interlayer antiferromagnet, this chromium sulfide uh, bromide, and uh, he demonstrated uh, uh, that uh, you, you could imprint on graphene uh, an exchange uh, coupling field uh, in the order of 170 Tesla, which is just gigantic. So we detect this with a Hanley spin precession measurement, but that's uh, uh, demonstrate that this, this uh, two dimensional or layered magnetic materials are really uh, bringing a new value in the quest of, uh, uh, let's say, two dimensional base spintronic. Several years ago, uh, it was also predicted and then confirmed experimentally that if you coat uh, magnetic, conventional magnetic material with graphene or even other two-dimensional material, then you could modify this interfacial property, which are essential when you want to switch uh, um, magnetic memory. And so this uh, perpendicular magnetic anisotropy, which is uh, the main figure of merit, could be increased very substantially uh, by this uh, graphene coating. In addition, graphene coating of magnetic materials uh, is increasing the stability of the memory. So this has been uh, a very important guide uh, for uh, demonstration, demonstrating, trying to demonstrate this into a fab environment. This is uh, undergoing research. And uh, let me finish this first part by uh, uh, mentioning that there are, uh, we are now at the age of uh, this demonstration in a fab environment that two dimensional materials are bringing a value uh, in terms of performances for um, conventional STT uh, MRAM or SOT MRAM. And so uh, recently we have been working with an international consortium, including big companies uh, to give the uh, state of the art vision of where are we and what, what, what are the benefits of these uh, materials and uh, when can we expect that they will become uh, realities uh, in uh, this uh, advanced generation of non-volatile memory technologies. So um, now this is the, the second part. We are moving uh, kind of different uh, direction now from the technology to Mr. Dirac. Uh, so as everybody know, uh, Dirac, uh, Paul Dirac was uh, the person who generalized the Schrodinger equation and he uh, uh, found, discovered the fact that the generalization uh, was uh, forcing to uh, include, to implement a new degrees of freedom, which turned out to be connected with the uh, increasing uh, angular momentum, the spin. And if you, if you have a look at this uh, Schrodinger equation, uh, you can write this uh, in terms of the matrix where your diagonal elements is just the, the energy uh, of your particle, where there are the off diagonal, which is uh, a sigma dot p, a sigma being uh, a vector defined by the Pauli matrices, uh, will give you actually the main form of this type of uh, Dirac, massive Dirac uh, 
um, dispersion relations. So it turns out that uh, for uh, two-dimensional uh, graphene, uh, kind of simple uh, derivation uh, allowed to uh, extract the low energy um, properties. And you find that the uh, energy versus uh, momentum is uh, also uh, described by uh, this type of Dirac cone. And you have two different valley. But here you're not relativistic anymore. Uh, the velocity of this uh, massless Dirac fermion in graphene is uh, 300 lower than the speed of light. But what is very interesting is that uh, you have additional intraparticle degrees of freedom, uh, which, which are related to the sublattice degeneracy of the honeycomb lattices, and uh, which uh, give a new quantum degree of freedom, which we can name pseudo spin. And you have also this valley, uh, uh, these two inequivalent valley in the Boolean zone, which give you an additional uh, degree of freedom. It turns out that these two degrees of freedom have the same mathematical structure as a spin. So at the end of the day, if you want to describe the electronic states uh, at, uh, at low energy, you have to in in introduce an eight component wave function. What is really uh, fascinating is that this uh, uh, in internal degrees of freedom like this uh, angular uh, momentum, have um, um, a kind of visualization. And for yeah, I'm, I'm showing what does I mean the pseudo spin uh, in terms of uh, projection of the wave function on the sublattices. We have two inequivalent sublattices A and B, uh, two atoms in the unit cell, and uh, your pseudo spin up will correspond to your wave function project only once sublattice and you sort of spin down will correspond on the wave function project on the other sublattice. The weight will be entirely located on the other one. So then when the, the electron is propagating in space, this uh, distribution of the wave function on the spatial uh, quantity uh, will be connected with this additional phase, uh, which you have to take into account. So there is this uh, additional um, uh, let's say pseudo spin, which is a good uh, quantum number, as long as the spin orbit coupling is not uh, involved. Uh, but then uh, when you switch spin orbit coupling, you will have some mixing between these different phases, and that will lead to uh, unprecedented, unprecedented uh, spin dynamics, as you will see. Um, all the beauty of quantum transporting graphene uh, was actually related to um, this sort of spin uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, this can be measured by ARPES. And the fact that the, the sort of spin uh, behave exactly at the spin means that if you rotate by 2 pi, you change the sign of the wave function. And as a result, if you have a low disorder in the graphene, like this uh, kind of uh, uh, long range uh, deformation, um, you will have a, a full cancellation of the backscattering probability. So that's why uh, clean graphene on top of a not too invasive substrate uh, uh, display mean free pass that can reach uh, several uh, micrometers uh, at room temperature. This is unprecedented in any material, even metals. OK, one important point is really the, uh, the fact that uh, when you try to, to measure spin transport, you have to deposit graphene on top of a substrate. You have to make the device fabrication, and you have to deal with uh, different source of, of spin orbit coupling that now we are going to analyze. So spin orbit coupling is something that is um, uh, from the relativ relativistic uh, Dirac equation can be seen as uh, when you have an electric field and you have an electron which propagate, then in its rest frame, it uh, uh, sends an effective magnetic field. And somehow this effective magnetic field will activate the dynamic of the spin. OK, so it will be a certain precession. And uh, this, will, uh, this will pilot the the spin transport property. One very uh, generic model is the so-called Rajba that, you, that has been developed for two-dimensional uh, electron gas, uh, which is uh, related to an effective electric field. And uh, interestingly, in this type of, uh, of dispersion uh, relation, uh, this uh, Rajba introduced a very uh, peculiar uh, spin momentum locking, spin texture, which is perpendicular to the direction of the momentum. And then the change. So it's a local spin momentum entanglement, uh, which has an important consequences 
if you want to uh, investigate the spin transport and especially the spin relaxation. It turns out that this uh, uh, spin momentum locking is equivalent to having an in-plane uh, effective spin, uh, effective magnetic field. So when you inject your, your spin uh, that you want to propagate in the system in an out-of-plane uh, initial polarization, it will process uh, fast around this in-plane um, uh, magnetic field. Whether if you inject in in-plane, there, there are some possible coincidence with the in-plane magnetic field. And as a result, it's a, an analytical result, uh, the out-of-plane uh, spin lifetime is half the value of the in-plane spin lifetime. Okay, concerning uh, uh, graphene, there have been a lot of calculations that have uh, investigated uh, the different uh, sources of intrinsic spin orbit coupling. One of them is uh, related to the hybridization between uh, orbitals, P uh, and D orbitals. It turned out that the source of spin orbit coupling uh, is uh, opening a gap of, uh, of, of Dirac cone, but the gap is, is extremely small in the order of 10 uh, microelectron volt. And this is a, a spin orbit coupling uh, mechanism, which uh, is equivalent to a hopping, a spin conservative hopping to the uh, next nearest neighbor. Um, the other important source of spin orbit coupling in graphene is uh, when you deposit the graphene on the substrate, you break the inversion symmetry, or when you apply a perpendicular electric field, uh, you get this rash bar spin orbit coupling. And um, this, uh, this spin orbit coupling can be modulated linearly with the strength of the, of the electric field. It is uh, uh, in the uh, low energy effective Hamiltonian it correspond to a, a spin flip uh, hopping event. And the values are typically in this order of magnitude. What is interesting is when you combine with increasing spin orbit coupling, depending on the relative strength, uh, you can find very different type of uh, um, bond structure, which are uh, spin split, and uh, but uh, for instance here, you for the same order of magnitude, you get a coexistence of a massive Dirac bonds with a massless Dirac bond, and these are have a very interesting consequence on transport. Also, an extremely important aspect that I already mentioned is the fact that uh, this this type of uh, Rajbar coupling, if you write them down in a, uh, let's say k dot p uh, approximation you will see that you have a coupling between the spin and the pseudo spin, which all these are partly matrices. And uh, uh, this entanglement is, can, can be uh, you know, evidence when you look at the eigenstate. You see that uh, your eigenstate is a, is a superposition of uh, spin and pseudo spin, but one is locked to another. Okay, so that, that will, this has been observed, but the consequences on, on dynamics have been um, discover, um, let's say, a few years ago. The other problem is the, uh, the dirty limit. When you make a, a spin device fabrication, you have a lot of uh, problems, a lot of residues, metallic residues. If you use CVD graphene, then you have the PMA residue. I'm not an expert of device, but plenty of source of spin orbit coupling that you have to take into account. Uh, sometimes it, it, it also inspired the possibility to use uh, uh, for instance, metallic atoms in order to enhance the spin orbit coupling. So that was one of the um, aspects uh, which was uh, interesting uh, for uh, trying to make graphene more active in terms of spin. So um, let, me, let me explain you what has happened initially. Uh, I'm saying that the graphene was uh, anticipated to be a very good spin uh, conductor, but uh, but it turned out to not to be that good, actually. It was predicted much better initially. So this was, this was one of the first uh, calculation uh, by Fabian and his group in Regensburg, where they uh, investigate the impact of a, let's say, a very realistic disorder and an homogeneous uh, Rajbar spin orbit coupling field, graphene deposit on substrate. By using a semi-classical uh, spin block equation, their prediction was, uh, that you will expect that the spin lifetime as a function of energy would almost diverge close to the direct point. It will become extremely long in the order of microsecond or even millisecond. So, um, however, um, despite uh, almost uh, despite a decade, more than 10 years of uh, uh, improvement of this uh, spin device using graphene, 
um, an improvement of the charge transport, higher and higher mobility, the spin lifetime uh, has reached an upper limit of a few nanoseconds. So we are far, far, far from uh, microsecond and six order of magnitude to millisecond. And in addition, the spin lifetime is not maximum at the direct point, but it's minimum at the direct point. And this has been seen again and again in all kinds of uh, graphene device. So really the question of the nature of spin relaxation mechanism and, uh, and, uh, and then how to, to control that to make a graphene more has been one of the key questions that has been addressed during the past decade. There were two known mechanisms uh, of spin relaxation, known in metals or in a small gap uh, semiconductor, two mechanisms that are actually opposite. Uh, in, for the metals, the more impurity you have, the shorter mean free pass and the shorter spin lifetime or spin diffusion length. And in the other case, it was, uh, uh, on the contrary, the system become more uh, disordered and you increase the spin lifetime and there is a scaling law which is completely opposite. So uh, this uh, uh, second uh, type of spin relaxation is very uh, curious. Uh, but uh, it can be it can be picture or uh, visualized with this type of, sim of uh, simulation where here we have uh, just a cut at the energy of the Dirac cone, and we have a scattering rate which is uh, very very short, uh, so so much shorter than the the spin precession frequency that is due to the spin orbit coupling strength, and this is another case where we it is in the order of the spin precession frequency. So this, this case would be much more dissolved. So as you can see with the eye, of course, since the spin is, is flipping continuously, you have a tendency to maintain the initial spin polarization, whether in the case you start to precess and you start to relax. If you, if you make a kind of simple uh, average about uh, with this type of uh, simple model, uh, then what you will indeed find is the uh, much uh, slower uh, spin relaxation when you have a larger disorder. So this is called the motional narrowing. And indeed, it can be demonstrated analytically that the spin uh, lifetime in this diakonov perel uh, regime is inversely proportional to the momentum scattering time. There have been a lot of discussion in the, in the literature, but it was not very convincing. Um, if uh, graphene on a substrate like silic silicon oxide was indeed responding to a diacon of Perel. So the, the cleaner the system, the shorter the spin lifetime. For the highest quality uh, device, this, th th there was no clear trend about, uh, about what's going on. So that was discussed for long. So um, let, let me show you what happened if you do the brute force simulation uh, with realistic model. For that, you know that uh, you, you, you have to uh, take into account the disorder due to the, the, the interface, the substrate. So not only the fact that there is an induced spin orbit coupling, but that also uh, you have type of electron, so-called electron hopodol, which are uh, long range charge density fluctuation, and they can be very well described uh, experimentally. And then typically uh, the strengths of the uh, an uniform hash bar, for instance, would be in the order of 10 micro electron volt. So, why don't we get this uh, very high value product initially? So when you do this simulation, you first find that um, uh, when graphene is on silicon oxide, indeed your uh, momentum scattering time will be much shorter, much shorter than the spin precession frequency due to this uh, uh, small value of the range by spin orbit coupling. However, when your graphene is deposited on a uh, substrate like boron nitride, which is very flat, then you get something very different. And, in, and in, you get even, the spin, uh, the momentum scattering time, which is larger than the spin precession frequency. So you, these are two regimes that are very different. And, in, and indeed, the result would be that they, um, um, okay, that they, they, uh, they, will exp they will have an impact on the, on, the, on the real spin lifetime you expect. So you, you can uh, simulate this um, exactly um, by using uh, some kind of optimized model. So you can, you can uh, start with your, uh, uh, spin uh, uh, your particle with its, uh, for instance, out of plane spin polarization, and then you let it propagate in a disorder landscape, either uh, due to the polar of the silicon oxide or the polar due to the uh, boron nitride. And then you have this, uh, um, if the system is super clean, you have this type of precession, which are due to the, the spin orbit coupling field, but also you have the relaxation due to the disorder. And it turns out indeed that the simulation show that uh, for graphene on silicon oxide, the system uh, responds as a diaconor perel mechanism. Uh, so the more impurity, the larger the spin lifetime. 
And uh, very importantly, this uh, ratio, uh, which is a space in the, the rash bus orbit coupling field, is, is, uh, is found numerically. However, for graphene on boron nitride, so when the system becomes clean, uh, you get something which is very curious. You have much more oscillation, but what is important is the spin lifetime as a function of energy. What you see that it, it kind of minimum at the direct point. It's very, very uh, striking for the graphene on, on boron nitride. And uh, for the typical value of Rajba that are predicted by Abinicio, you get this value in the order of a few nanoseconds. So corresponding to what has been found again and again in experiment. And what is the origin of this uh, uh, very short, very short, short spin lifetime at the direct point? Um, is actually the fact that the dynamics between spin and pseudopin become entangled. So uh, spin become more sensitive to uh, uh, this pseudo spin. They become more coupled to spin orbit coupling, especially at the direct point. And that's why uh, this accelerates the phasing and relaxation of the spin. Turns out, so it turns out that not only all the proper quantum transport property of graphene are anomalous due to solar spin, spin transport is also very specific because of this internal uh, additional degrees of freedom. Um, by the way, uh, Chairman, uh, chair, chair, Chairwoman, can you tell me uh, what is my time and how long? Uh, because yeah, it's... Okay, so you, you have like uh, 15 more minutes. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so I'm going, I will not maybe go to the end, but that's okay. You, talk, you stop me when you, you have enough of my talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because okay. I still have for quite some time and I don't want to go too fast. Okay, so let me, I, I explained that there is something very curious. I would just uh, skip uh, uh, this uh, more uh, explanation, even analytical, we can show this analytical. So uh, the, 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 the diagram we have for the spin lifetime as a function of uh, scattering time is, uh, is very peculiar. Uh, we have for the more disordered materials something that we understand, and for the systems that are cleaner, something which is really specific to this uh, uh, graphene and its internal degree of freedom. OK, uh, one very important question, as I say, was to understand the uh, aspects that are really uh, uh, inherent to this large-scale gra uh, graphene material. And one of them is the, the polycrystallinity of the system, because you don't grow a single crystal at the wave of scale. You grow a polycrystalline uh, graphene. So, um, and that's, we know that this uh, impact on the, on the charge transport, but we want to understand to which extent they impact on, on the spin transport. So you can make model of this, um, of this uh, polycrystalline graphene, it's much more complicated to understand what is the impact of spin orbit coupling, but that, that can be done. You can uh, investigate this with a TFT to some extent, a small unit cell. Then you can try to, to um, design a type binding model to capture the essential um, impact on the spin orbit coupling, on the bond splitting, on the spin texture. It turns out that we found a very simple model, which is just a, a, a a kind of renormalization of the on-site energy depending on the environment, the geometrical environment. And this is, was enough to, uh, to capture the, uh, um, the main aspect due to the polycrystallinity. And what is uh, the main result is uh, the following, is that your spin diffusion length is actually independent on the grain side. You can have polycrystalline graphene with uh, um, average grain side of 10 nanometers or several micron. As long as the system remain in the diakonov perel that is, uh, the scattering is enough to, uh, to make the, the diakonov perel active, then the spin diffusion length is just uh, given by the strength of the spin orbit coupling due to the substrate. And, and we get a uh, typical 10 micron for uh, graphene on top of silicon oxide and uh, 50 microns for graphene on boron nitride. And this is, uh, and this is, what, is what is observed experimentally. So that's, that's, a, that's an analytical result, <laughs> actually. But, but uh, to show this with a brute force, brute force exact uh, spin dynamics method is, uh, is very uh, interesting. So uh, now we have all this proximity effect. This proximity effect, as I say, is what makes graphene and two-dimensional material unique for spin one. So graphene on top of strong spin orbit coupling material has been one of the major uh, breakthroughs uh, during the, the recent years. And uh, when you deposit graphene on a transition metallic acrogenide, it turns out that the change 
on the bond is very small. I mean, you, you, the gap opening is very small and the bond splitting is remain small, in the order of a milli electron volt. However, the spin texture in graphene are strongly modified. And as a result, and this can be elaborated and we'll go to the detail, but as a result, what you get is an enormous spin transport anisotropy, giant spin transport anisotropy. That means that when you inject the spin, for instance, out of plane, this is the case which is the most interesting one, uh, you have a very low decay of the spin information, whether if you inject in, in plane, then you have a very fast decay of the spin information. And this happened in the case where you have a strong, in addition, strong disorder. And basically because this is what's shown here, this uh, spin texture um, are dominated by one of the spin orbit coupling term, which is called the Zeeman, uh, uh, valley Zeeman term, and uh, it means that when you eject out of plane and there is a lot of scattering between valley, you have a kind of very strong um, Rajba type, uh, a Diakonov Perel type of mechanism, so which make the anisotropy enormous. And we found theoretically that this anisotropy, so spin lifetime out of plane was not one half spin lifetime in plane, but it could be 10 to 100 times larger. And uh, we got uh, lucky, not lucky, because uh, we were uh, discussing on a daily basis with our, with our colleague from the, from the graphene flagship, uh, who uh, could uh, actually experimentally uh, demonstrate that indeed uh, this type of phenomenon could be measured uh, and that it would be robust up to room temperature. So, um, let me, I'm sorry, I, 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 I didn't really calculate the, uh, the time. I want to go to, the, to this part, to touch a bit this part, because it's a very excited one. As I said, um, one of the mechanisms that very interesting is the spin all effect. Spin all effect is the generation of a pure spin current by, uh, by using a, a charge current or an electric field and using this proximity effect. It was one of the main question, can we do that? to get a very high so-called spin along. Well, you want to have a maximum spin current generate for a certain charge current. So uh, in addition, we have uh, the situation that usually increasing the spin diffusion lengths and increasing the spin all angle. So increasing both is what we need for spin phony, but they go opposite way. Okay, so that, that's, that's a real problem. The system can transport spin for for long distance, but the, it's a, it's a, but then the problem is you cannot manipulate it. And if you want, if you can easily manipulate it, then it relax fast. So that that's a real question to find a, a, a material that could get a high spin on angle and long spin diffusion length. So um, there have been a lot of activity to trying to increase spin orbit coupling in graphene. Um, and uh, one of the most interesting uh, results is related to the fact that graphene on a transition metal nickel cogenide is actually showing such a giant spin all angle. So this can be uh, computed. Let me forget about that. So we could make a simulation and look at what is the best uh, uh, transition metal nickel cogenide TMD, which will increase the, the spin all conductivity, which is related to the spin all angle. So from an intrinsic uh, perspective, uh, we can um, guess or we can simulate and, and, and find what is the best material. And, um, and on the experimental side, so this uh, again, the group of uh, Felix and uh, Casanova and Luis Hueso, uh, which was the first unambiguous uh, demonstration that this uh, spin all effect could be induced by proximity effect. And, um, and Sergio Balanzuela, who, who I think gave a talk last week, uh, made also uh, a quantification and the room temperature demonstration that this uh, product of uh, spin diffusion length and spin on angle could reach very large value, much larger than heavy atom, um, heavy metals. Uh, so, and it is, uh, uh, in addition, it is, uh, can be tuned by, by the electric field. So that was a, a very imp uh, important advance uh, in the field. Uh, what has been uh, more recently uh, discovered is that um, these um, low symmetry TMDs like uh, molybdenum ditelaride uh, or tungsten ditelaride shown even larger uh, figure of merit for a uh, spintronic device. There is even a result which we do not really, which we are questioning somehow, 
which find some value, which is just like so many order of magnitude larger than heavy metals. So we did the simulation and what we found in this type of material like a multi two is that there is, uh, due to the low symmetry, there is a, a so-called persistent canted spin texture in the YZ plane, which, is, which means that the, the spin texture becomes K independent for a long, uh, in, the, in, the, in the bottom of the bounds. And this, uh, so this can be captured and this gives rise to not only a, a spin transport anisotropy, here we show the, uh, the change, of course, if the, there is a, uh, this kind of spin texture means that there is an equivalent uh, effective uh, magnetic field. So if you inject a spin with uh, X direction, then you will process fast and you will relax very fast, whether this will not be the case for the, um, for the Y or Z direction. So this can be captured with a non-local uh, transport simulation. Um, and uh, and what, what is very interesting is the fact that we indeed uh, can predict um, the, 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 the result that the spin diffusion length times the spin or angle uh, uh, reach values which are extremely large. So I'm not, not the time to enter into the calculation, but we can make this a very realistic simulation and get this type of prediction. So I think I may have like five or 10 minutes uh, and I would like to finish with uh, mentioning these uh, topological uh, phases so this is, um, as you probably know, a uh, prediction of, uh, let's say, a new state of matter, the quantum spin-all effect um, related to intrinsic spin-orbit coupling. And even though uh, for the, the prediction was made on, on, on graphene nanoribbon, and uh, given that the, the gap was microelectron volt, it was not possible to observe with such type of material. So then came all the, the work on topological insulator, People have tried to propose to use these uh, heavy ad atoms to enhance the spin orbit coupling and opening a gap which could be more substantial. Um, the problem is that you, when you deposit an atom on top of graphene, they, they tend to cluster, and that makes the, um, the control of an homogeneous distribution of uh, strong sp uh, spin orbit coupling very difficult. So uh, then you can have switching between different type of uh, quantum phase, and uh, it's very difficult to maintain the quantum spin all uh, regime, as we have discussed in this paper. Um, what has been more recent and is much more uh, promising is that this, again, the use of this uh, uh, monolayer of um, uh, TMDs, and especially the tungsten detelaride in one phase. This was a report that uh, the quantum spin all effect uh, could manifest at a temperature of 200 Kelvin. Um, but these were uh, purely um, uh, electrical measurement, and the plateau is not, you know, super quantized, but uh, it's an indication that something is happening there. So uh, there is a need to uh, to really demonstrate what's going on, and what we found is, uh, oh, sorry for this slide, this is a bit too much uh, equation, but too, um, sorry for that. What we found is that this uh, uh, counted uh, in, uh, K, uh, momentum invariance uh, spin texture also um, gives rise to a counted uh, quantum uh, spin all effect. So this, uh, by, by doing some calculation of spin all conductivity, or let's say, we're not enter into, into the, the detail, we found that um, uh, the, in this material, what happened is that uh, you can really detect this quantum spin all effect, but uh, to do that, you, you have to consider that uh, your spin polarization of this topological edge state is, uh, is out of plane in a certain, in a certain direction. So uh, this uh, we published uh, very recently, so people who are interested uh, can have a look. Uh, it demonstrates that the symmetry are very important uh, in all these materials, uh, of in internal symmetries of the material, but the symmetries, the symmetry which are broken by interaction with substrate, so the, the quantity, the capability of this uh, uh, by stacking different materials is, is gigantic. So it is really a question of um, a systematic screening of uh, possibilities in order to achieve um, a control of spin transport in, uh, in this ultra compact device. I'm just saying that uh, this counted quantum spin all effect has been con confirmed experimentally. So oh, I have presented some uh, results uh, which are based on very efficient linear scaling quantum transport uh, methodologies. Uh, 
which we have developed during the past two decades. We are now uh, a website, a web platform where we will um, disseminate these methods uh, and we'll invite people interested to contact us. Uh, so we have also some kind of book, um, some of my presentation. I think a lot of the second part of the presentation, almost everything is discussed in this second edition of our book. And I'm finished. Uh, I'm sorry, it was a bit too, too slow. No, it's but, okay. It's okay. You, it's, you it's are okay. on time. It's okay now. So, yeah. So thank you for your attention, wherever you are <laughs> on, the, on the virtual world. And if you have any question, you can ask now or later. So, okay. Uh, thank you very much, Stefan, for this uh, nice talk. You have uh, shown us a really wide variety of things in just one hour. Very, very, very wide, very interesting. Uh, we already have some questions. Yes, Joshua Salazar, thanks for the amazing talk, very useful. On the slide of the spin hole effect in low symmetry multilayers, were you able to get an analytical expression to fit the experimental data of the harmonic hole resistance? Uh, can, I, can I share again? It's okay. Ah. It's possible yeah. I can share again, right? Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I think I was, uh, oops, what happened? Let me uh, just take out the pointer. Um, so we can indeed, uh, let me see if I understand the question. Um, here we have, a, we have a, a spin diffusion equation that uh, we have uh, written for this type of, uh, of phenomena. And then with the brute force simulation, uh, we can actually fit uh, the uh, result of the simulation with this spin diffusion equation to extract the spin or angle. And, uh, and the spin, uh, so this one, this is, uh, this is what happened. This is the spin accumulation across the, the, the graphene, uh, no, it's not the graphene, the TMD uh, ribbon. And um, depending on, on the direction of the spin polarization. And this is the evolution of spinal angle as a function of the energy. So, so yeah, we, we, need, we need to have a fitting formula, but this is, this, this is derived in the paper. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I have, a, I also have a, a question while uh, some other people write questions. Um, you have clearly shown us that uh, proximity effects are maybe the most or one of the most interesting things or interesting characteristics of uh, graphene. Um, it seems that uh, you can really tune in, in graphene basically everything, band structure, spin uh, texture. Uh, just, you just need to choose the appropriate uh, layer on top or on bottom and just you just uh, tailor the, the graphene as you want. So from my question is from the um, experimental point of view, how important is the crystal quality in order to really get uh, to tune the properties of the graphene? Yeah, um, thank you for the question. Um, of course, uh, it is expected that um, the intrinsic effect are the most interesting. For spinal effect, for spin orbit torque, uh, we want to, pre I mean, we privilege the quality of the interface because uh, then we can have very stable translational invariant um, parameters. And so, um, and we can, in addition, we can, we can really extract this, uh, the nature of the, of the spin accumulation density and its, its characteristics uh, in, a, in a more um, rigorous way if the system is clean. We can add disorder and certainly in the experiment, uh, you always find a certain uh, source of disorder that you have to account with. But the, the objective is really to try to grow um, the interfaces, materials and interfaces that are as clean as possible because intrinsic effects are believed to be uh, um, the most interesting for increasing the strength of the phenomena, for instance, for increasing the strength of the spinal, uh, spinal effect, spinal, spinal angle, uh, intrinsic effect is, uh, is the most uh, interesting. Uh, 
uh, start as soon as you start to put disorder, you can maybe have some extrinsic contribution, but that's that's not uh, what will be useful for application. We need clean system. So there is another dimension of what your question is that this is not only the defect, there is also the twisting, the twist angle. Because as you know, certainly that there is a major breakthrough several years ago by a Spanish, uh, uh, now he's an MIT, he's a, he's a kind of big figure of MIT, who discovered superconductivity in a bilayer graphene by just a, a change of the uh, twist angle. Uh, Turns out that if you have graphene on a material, a two-dimensional magnetic material, even two-dimensional magnetic materials on top of one of another, uh, you have enormous differences. The symmetries and the, the resulting spin orbit coupling or the magnetism will be very different. So this is another challenge to be able to control uh, the interfacing, not only to stack material at random, but to stack them in a certain orientation. And, uh, and what we have to do also, and what we are doing in my group in particular, is to have a, a kind of systematic, let's say, matching learning and you know, uh, brute force study of all the possible arrangements, of all the possible type of heterostructure in order to get to reach the upper limit. For instance, if we want to have a spin orbit torque component with a certain symmetry and with the highest, the strongest, um, uh, intensity, then we need to make this kind of really large benchmarking and, and kind of matching learning calculation because, because there are an infinite number of, of possibilities of different type of materials of different and, and imagine the twist angle. This is like uh, an infinite numbers. So, so this is a new challenge for, for Spintronic with two dimensional material. Um, there will be a lot of development in the forthcoming um, five years, probably. And, uh, and that will certainly be one, one part of the, of the game to really bring these materials at a limit that uh, was not even envisioned uh, five or 10 years before. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, yes, uh, this is uh, one uh, curiosity at the beginning of the, your talk. I think it was in uh, chromium uh, iodide. Uh, you show us that uh, they have measured up to 170 teslas of a magnetic field. Do Correct. you know how, how was it measured? It's a huge. Yeah, huge, uh, yeah it's enormous. Um, so those, this, this, this is a, this is a, a non-local uh, handler and there is a proximity effect. So it's a, it is measured on a spin valve configuration. And locally, this uh, um, uh, antiferromagnetic uh, is, uh, is imprinting uh, exchange coupling on graphene. And this is then uh, transferred and detected uh, and even modulated with an external magnetic field. So um, this corresponds to, to uh, tens of milli electron volts. Uh, if, the, if the interface is very clean, uh, we predict this type of values. Uh, so, so that's not an even larger one. So that's not a, that's the first time that it, uh, such a large uh, exchange coupling is detected. Before it was just uh, limited to mini Tesla or even a few Tesla uh, with a YIG. And but this is the first by Barvan Viz, the first enormous exchange coupling that is uh, detected on graphene directly. So, and it is detected up to the the temperature is the nail temperature of the antiferromagnet. So it's a very it's a unquestionable detection. Of the proximity effect, so that that's an, an indirect readout of um, magnetism by an imprint by imprinting it on graphene. It's not useful per se for spintronic devices, but it shows that uh, that that can be controlled and that kind of gigantic uh, exchange coupling can be can be uh, transferred to this type of material. This is exactly what we want to have part of this graphene architecture, which are magnetized to get rid of magnetic material, but just kind of, of, of ultra compact device. And, uh, and, and in other part of the device, we will have proximity effect with strong spin orbit coupling material in order to switch the spin. And so uh, kind of control um, at kind of, to have kind of active spin device functionality to all on the same platform. Okay, um, thank you very much. I don't see 
any other question on the other platform. So I'm going to thank you again okay, for, thank for you. your, your lecture thank you. and uh, I clap you on thank you. Thank you. behalf anyway, of uh, anyway. all. Thank at you. Any time, at any time, people can contact me, can find me on the internet, and I'm very happy to continue discussing with anybody. Okay, right. thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, so we move on to the next uh, speaker this afternoon. Oh, yes, we move on. Uh, so our next speaker is uh, Luis Hueso, who is currently an Iker Basque research professor and leader of the Nano Devices Group and leader of the and scientific director of the Maria de Maec to Unit of Excellence at uh, Nano Une Research Center in the Basque Country. He obtained a PhD degree in physics at the University of Santiago Compostela 2002 and has been a postdoctoral fellow at the University